Hi, my name is Steve Byers. Today, I'm going to walk through a new feature in iOS that was introduced alongside iOS 11. It is actually a feature that we get from Swift 4 and the Foundation Framework, so it is compatible with iOS 7 and up, not just iOS 11, as long as the app is compiled with Xcode 9. As you can see on the screen, I have a simple view set up in Interface Builder that consists of a label and a button. On app launch, the label is going to be set to a number. Every time I click the button, the number in the label will be increased by 1, and this will happen through KVO. Looking at the code now, you'll see that I have some stubs set up. First, when the class is instantiated, the holder property will be assigned an instance of a number holder class. The number holder class is at the bottom of the file and is an empty class right now. Returning to the ViewController's ViewDidLoad method, notice that it is calling the setText method. This is so that the label has a valid value on app launch. Next, the setText method is stubbed out but does not do anything yet. Finally, the button on our view has been wired up to call add1 when it receives the touchup inside event. To get started, we need to fill out the number holder class, since that will have the variable that we want to use the block-based KVO with. First, we're going to make our number holder class subclass NSObject. Next, we will create a variable called number with a starting value of 0. A property written in this way is not eligible for KVO, though. We need to add the at OBJC and dynamic keywords. That's all for the number holder class. Returning to the view controller, we will first fill out the two functions that have been stubbed out. Set text is simply going to give the label whatever value is in the number property of the number holder class instance. The add1 function will add 1 to the number property of the number holder class instance. Now we can get to the KVO. We have to declare a new variable of type NS key value observation. This will be an optional so that we don't have to assign it right away. Finally, we will create the block based KVO and store it in the token property that was previously created. There is also a new way of creating key paths. Previously, this would have just been a string, but now it is done in a way that the compiler can help. Simply add a backslash, then use dot syntax to make a path from the object that you are setting up the observer for down to the property that you want to observe. In this case, it will just be dot number. The block that we create takes in an object, which is the same type as the object we are observing, along with an NS key value change observed object. We are going to reference self inside of this block, so we will make sure it is a weak reference so that no retain cycle is created. Finally, we are calling set text within the block. That's all there is to it. We don't have to unregister anywhere, which means we don't need to worry about KVO getting fired for objects that are no longer in memory. If you've worked with KVO much, I'm sure you recognize how nice it will be to not have to trace down those types of KVO bugs. Now we can build and run and see that everything is working as we expected. One final note. The reason for holding on to the NS key value observation object may not be immediately evident, but it is important. If we do not keep this, the KVO will immediately be unregistered, which means the block will never be fired. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.